I just wanted to do a quick follow up on yesterday's tutorial on how do we the workflow the workflow we take to process our spatial data. Um, so again, we are going out into growers' vineyards and doing some early season NDVI and soil scanning um, in our cooperating vineyards. So yesterday. Um, we went out to this commercial vineyard. It's about an 11 acre vineyard and we used a crop circle uh, reflectance sensor to collect NDVI measurements. And we used a dual EM soil sled to collect um, electrical conductivity and magnetic susceptibility in this vineyard. So we were in this vineyard um, maybe a couple hours and this was our first run at it. So we were getting things set up, um, but it didn't take us long. We run, we drive up and down every other row and collect our data. And then right from the data logger, we pull off that raw data and pull it into my EV. So the raw data comes in, just like we talked about in the tutorial. So I clean that data up, uh, I snapped it to the block and then interpolated it and came up with our interpolated NDVI map, which we now wanna translate uh, into actual shoe counts. The other thing that I did when we were out in the vineyard is as we were driving up and down the rows, I could see, yeah, there's a difference. There was a difference in shoot count between the vines and I couldn't really identify what the pattern was in the vineyard as we were driving up and down. But I said, oh, if I just walk up one row and down another row, um, I can either count shoots, but in this case, I set up a data collector and I collected images. So as I walked up and down two rows, I every so often I just snapped a picture and that was geo-referenced, all done within the My EV data collector. And then I could use that later on to count the shoots and get my validation measurements. And that looks something like this. So if I, after I processed my NDVI, I have an interpolated NDVI map. Those points are the points where I stopped and took a picture through the vineyard. And that looks something like this. So when I have the My EV data collector, I took that picture, with my, on my phone, it saved it. And so every one of those dots has a picture that looks similar um, to what you see in the corner there. And when I got back to my desktop, you could you know, open up that photo and count the number of shoots that are in each one of those photos. And so I edited the data collector to now have a shoot count. So I looked at the image, I counted the shoots, I entered the shoot count um, that looks something like this. So I had a slider that went from zero to 300 and I could put in the shoot number that I counted. And then I went to the translator. So I have my interpolated NDVI. Now I have my validated shoot counts uh, from my images. I get a nice relationship and I said, okay, relationship's good enough for me for now. And I ran the translation and now I have an interpolated map. So all in all, it took me about five minutes to go from the raw data from the data logger to have an interpolated NDVI map. Then I would say it took me about a half hour to go through those images and count the shoots. Again, not perfect, but I get a good idea of where the vines had very few shoots or the vines that had a lot of shoots. Got that relationship translated my map. Um, so now I can see there is definitely a pattern in that vineyard where we have, uh, you know, areas of lower shoot number or weaker vine growth and areas with stronger vine growth. Um, so the other thing that we did was we took um, the soil sled and that'll give us soil EC and magnetic susceptibility. This is an interpolated map of shallow soil EC. And again, so we're starting to, you can start to see the pattern um, in soil relating to shoe counts. So another kind of tricky thing I did was if I have a high density NDVI map or a high density shoe count map and a soil EC, I use the translator kind of not really what it was intended to be used for. Usually we take a high density data set like NDVI and a low density data set like in-field validation shoe counts. And I look at that relationship to translate one map from another. In this case, I'm taking two high density data sets. One is my, my shoe count map and the other one is my uh, soil EC map. 
And I just want to see what the relationship is between those two. Well, I can use the translator tool and I select those two data layers and I can see that, you know, there's a lot more data points here now, but there is this very general positive relationship between soil EC and shoe count. So in this particular vineyard, relatively speaking, where the soil has higher EC, so it probably has um, a little bit higher clay content, um, maybe there's differences in soil depth, um, texture, whatever it is, is in, in those areas, we're getting a higher shoe count. So correlation isn't causation, right? We don't know exactly that the soil is having an effect on shoe count, but there are two similar patterns there, which help, you know, give me more information to do a little bit more investigation in this vineyard to find out what's going on and be able to correct that in some way. Um, either even out the shoot density across that field or just use that spatial pattern um, to do different management or do crop estimation later in the season. So, um, so really that's it. it. And again, we took a couple hours to scan the vineyard, it took me about five minutes to process the maps, uh, it took about a half hour to do the validation counts and the, and the translation. So, so really just a couple hours worth of work and I have a, pattern in my vineyard that I can use as a base layer and move on with my management management throughout the season. So I hope this helps. I just wanted to quickly show you how, how fast we can generate some information in our vineyards and, you know, good luck going forward um, this year.